All right. And we're live. We're live. Okay. Welcome back to the Kendra Crump show. I got my first guest coming in. Um, and I think some of the members of my podcast team are going to show up as well. Um, but this brother right here, he, he he's amazing. E everything about him. I, I don't, I don't know what to say about him. He is, uh, uh, he, he started like organizations. He is all for the people. Uh, kids love him. They respect him. They're everything. Like best rapper out here. He's like your favorite singer's favorite singer. I'm about to go ahead and bring Country Five to the stage. How we doing, brother? Hey, Jordan. How you hey, doing? Look you, got, look, you got the whole microphone set and everything. <laughs> I'm set up for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, look, you know, one of my um fellow podcast members actually showed up. Um, I want to go ahead and bring him to the stage. Um, man, I can't wait till you meet him. Pineapple. What? We got you on. We got you on, <laughs> man. Pineapple. What's up, man? What's going on, pineapple? Everything copacetic. Um, kind of reading your bio a little bit. Uh, she has sent it to us a little early. Uh, appreciate your service, man. No doubt, no doubt. Because he was in the service too. Still, still yeah. is. He still is. Yeah, still am. Oh uh, yeah, thank you too. Then we both out there doing. It. Oh yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Well, you know, without further ado, um, I got my notes and everything. I haven't done an interview in a while, so you brought you 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 rebroke my interview virginity. Hey, so I appreciate you. I appreciate. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so. First thing I want to ask, and Pineapple, please uh, jump in at any time you have any questions or so. Uh, you're from a small town in South Carolina called Lawrence County. I got that correct, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. Uh, and it's one, you know, one thing I like about small towns is, listen, if somebody owes you some money, you know where to find them, okay? So I want to know, what were some of your fondest memories growing up in the country, you know, things that you missed from back in the day that they don't have anymore? You know, and what was your upbringing like as well? Uh, most of it was uh, as kids, we used to go out and play. We had our own game, you know, hide and go see kickball, football. We just really playing outside um, was one of my, it's like some of my fondest memories growing up. Um, fishing, fishing with my grandfather. I still do that to this day, but, um, but pretty much playing outside, um, going to little dances and people actually dance. That's something that that you don't really see a lot anymore. So those mm -hmm. are some of the things I, I knew just growing up that I just kind of loved. Um, I had a pretty good upbringing, you know, um, middle class family um, and, uh, uh, you know, church going people. Uh, you know, uh, my life wasn't that difficult. So um, I, I would say I had a pretty good childhood, you know, for the most part. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and when you mentioned about church going people, so, uh, you know, one of the questions I, and I, we have talked about uh, with religion and I know, you know, growing up, you may believe one thing, right? And then when you realize what the truth is or whatever it might be, you have a whole different perspective. So what was God or Jesus like to you? Who was he to you back then? And where is your relationship with him now? Uh, <clears throat> well, back then it was, it was traditional, just like everyone in my family and everyone that went to church, uh, as if it was a, a man um, that was in the sky that created all of these different things and and just us humans pretty much here on earth. And, and he catered to us and and, um, and the stories that's, that's pretty much in the Bible. Um, so just like a traditional way, I, I was I was feeling that way um, growing up. But once I started doing research and started to realize and find out that there are so many different um, entities and intelligent entities in these universes, um, then I started to know why the Bible and why God and Jesus presented to us mm -hmm. the way it was for control purposes and to make us feel like we're the only things here and, and we're mm -hmm. that as opposed to letting us know the truth about so many other creations that can do so many more things than we can as humans, you know? So mm -hmm. that, that's where I'm at with it now versus 
what I was when I first started going to church. That's real. That's real. Um, and I want to, you know, growing up, so you mentioned about, like I said, with the fishing, church, everything else in that realm. Uh, were you an All-American, like, uh, sports teams? Uh, what was, like, the high school life for you prior to, you know, like I say, enlisting yourself and everything else in that realm? Yeah, um, I wasn't an All-American, um, I, but I did play football, and I started both ways. Uh, my in my um, varsity year, junior year, every year that I played, I started both ways. So I was a pretty good football player, um, but it wasn't the best. But I was good enough to start. You were decent. You you still got you, you still got some of your trophies or yeah, letterman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I got some. You know, I, I did some things while I was there. You know, then I, I went on to play football for the Marine Corps. But uh, but oh, yeah, they have a football team in the Marine Corps. Look, that's mm -hmm. that's I'm, I'm, I didn't even know that. Do yeah. they got a basketball team as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they got they got everything soccer yeah. volleyball trash yeah. they got everything. everything so you oh, know wow. okay. one reason why I joined they had everything I was looking for <laughs> okay. yeah mm -hmm. same so, positions as well or what what yeah, did you have different okay positions, yeah. were you a, a wide receiver or what was your position? Now, I, I was a running back uh you know more of a fullback and a, a, a linebacker. Okay. I was a lot bigger then than I am now, but yeah. Okay, got you, got you. And I did do a, a little bit of tight end and slots here and there, but for the most part, it was running back and, and linebacker. Okay, and oh, wait, real quick, gotta know, give me your top five of all time, no particular order, NFL players, excluding yourself, Brady, Ray Lewis, Primetime, Jim Brown. Give me your top five, no particular Let's order. Go. That sounds like you just named them off right there. You know what I'm saying? You just named them off. You know what I'm saying? Everybody yeah. gonna say them. So I got I gotta have a different it can hey, be hey, old school, it can be new school. Definitely Tom Brady. Tom Brady definitely the, the goat. Okay. You know? Um and, and and Peyton Manning, I think he he's 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 one of the goats as well because he he's a he's a, he's a coach player. He he'll get on that line and he'll see some stuff and he'll switch it up right away and it and it's hard to to beat a player like that. Um, you know, I think Ray Lewis was a, was a really, really good player. Um, and, uh, you know, the impact that he had on his team, um, I think was, was, was pretty good. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So I see one of my boys, Martinez just chimed in. He was playing football with me out there. They used to call me big country when I was in the okay. But like I said, I was a lot bigger then than I am now. A lot more, more slow. Yeah, most of all, yeah, up in the two okay. shout, <laughs> shout out to Martinez. <laughs> yeah, that's my partner right there. We uh, we was in the Marine Corps together, did a lot of great things together. You know, while we was in there. So, p upon graduation, what made you say, "Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and list myself"? What was that that defining moment, reason why? Um, <clears throat> well, I wanted to get to California to be an actor and a rapper. So I, I just didn't know how to do it being in a small town in South, a small town in South Carolina. So mm -hmm. I, I was, you know, I didn't think I had it to be able to just get up and move. I didn't, I wasn't that confident. So when the recruiter came to me and he uh, told me about the Marine Corps, I asked him, could he send me to California? And he said, yeah. And I was like, that's all I really need to hear. You know, if you can, that was my way out. So I knew then that was the avenue. Go ahead and do the Marine Corps. They send me West Coast. Then I'll at least be away from my house and closer to Hollywood um, than South Carolina, obviously. And and that that's what that's that's all the difference that it made for me was for him to send me to California. And it worked out. It worked out like a book, you know. It really did. And were you the first person in your immediate or extended family like that had enlisted yourself, or you had like you know, was your grandfather? Yeah, and my, yeah. My, um, everyone on my my daddy's side um, was in the military some kind of way. None of them was in the Marines, but the Army, National Guard, so like that. My father was in the National Guard. You know, my uncle he was like in the Army. Um, so I had a military back, you know, family on my daddy's side. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and so yeah, you know. Okay. All right. Well, one thing that I did um, write down, you know, I know that. Uh, you enlisted yourself back in the mid '90s, and in the movie 
Boys in the Hood, Theory Styles made a comment saying that a black man has no place in a white man's army. And then Pineapple, you can answer this as well. Uh, do you agree or disagree? Um, and then the second part with that is why did you decide to discharge yourself? So whichever one, whoever wants to. What you think, Pineapple? Well, I think back when that movie was um, was written and created, and he was thinking, you know, speaking logically back in the 60s and 70s, probably when he enlisted, probably had a lot more truth to it then. Here we are in this day and age. I think some of those truths still do resonate in today's military because I can tell you, seen it firsthand, you do see African-American soldiers having some struggles, you know, with racism. A lot of them have come up on the net about racism and prejudices in the military. There was actually something that was just published a couple of days ago um, where a command sergeant major or current one, one of them, a battalion command team, they had some higher rankings coming through and he basically said he didn't want anybody who had a shaving profile, a waiver, you know, out there in formation, which is, I would say probably 85 to 95 percent of the people in the military that have shaven profiles are Americans. So kind of excluded a whole bunch of folks. And you see a lot of people like at work now, I go into work and they be like, hey, hey, you know, when you gonna shave, man, blah, 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 blah. And make like crazy comments and stuff. Oh man, your beard looking nice, this, that, and the third. I'm like, yeah, I know. You know, you know, should I, I wonder, wish I can have one? Well, try growing one or, <laughs> you know, get, get a, a religious accommodation profile, you know, to where you can grow. You know, at, at this point now, I'm just in the rebel stage, you know, because you have a lot of issues going on. Um, There's a big TikTok influencer. He was in the Marine Corps. He got out because of those same reasons. Um, I forget the kid's name. I think his last name is McCray, but he got out because of a lot of those issues. And a lot of it was stemming from the fact that he was passed up on a lot of opportunities because he had to get a shaving waiver. Um, again, you guys call them chits. Marines. Yeah. So he got like a chit for his shaving and that brought a lot of backlash on him. So... I believe it does a lot. I mean, but it's kind of what you put into it is what you get out of it because a lot of us make it far in the military and it's based on merit and not necessarily on the color of your skin. Yeah, I agree with Pineapple. Um, when I was going through um, between 95 and 99, you can, you can witness racism, but racism is all over America. So, you know, it depends on, it doesn't matter what company that you that you were part of you gonna feel some of it but it didn't affect me too much because i pretty much done what i wanted to do the whole time i was in there you know I, I i didn't feel it too much i wasn't disrespected by anybody no matter what my rank was i was always in charge um my whole time from the from the beginning to the end i was pretty much my own boss when i was in the marine corps i had no issues i done what i wanted do a whole bunch of parties <laughs> you know I, I i had a lot of friends it, it, it was it, it was it was cool so i didn't really take it on firsthand as much as i witnessed it being a, a part of the military you know what i'm saying so and and for as me getting out uh, that was the plan before i went in mm -hmm. i didn't go into the marine corps to do um 20 years i went in to go to california <laughs> and, but, and go to hollywood so once I got in and once I done my time after my four years, I moved to Hollywood because that was the plan. It was never the plan to re-enlist. Got you. Um, I want to ask you, what were some of the pros and cons that, and you probably the first person I ever came across to say, I pretty much did what I wanted. I didn't have no no type of smoke. Probably the first and, and I don't know, might be the last, but what were some of the pros and cons of joining uh, the Marine Corps? Well, some of the pros is I, I was able to go to school for very, very cheap without having um, any type of uh, student debts or loans or whatever attached to it. Um, the, you know, I was able to to be able to be in another state and still feel like 
I had some type of protection or oversight by having the Marine Corps there. I had a place to stay and, and a place to eat, you know, um, and, and, and I had a secure job. So, so those, those, and those, some of the, pro, the pros, um, also now, even now getting out, you have benefits, medical benefits, you want to go to school, you want to buy a house. So a lot of those benefits, um, was something that was, was amazing, um, being in the military. And I met a whole lot of friends and people from all over the states. Um, and then, you know, we used to, I used to throw all these parties when I was in the Marine Corps. And so it was, it was amazing to be able to keep that urban street part of our lives in the Marine Corps. So, you know, um, so that, so those are some of the things, the cons, you know, um, people kind of talk to you and like I said, it didn't really bother me too much because it didn't happen to me as much, but people that's higher ranking than you will talk to you crazy or talk down to you or look down to you because of the rank. Everything is based off of what's on your slip, your collar, knowing that they wouldn't approach you or talk to you that way if you was outside of the Marine Corps. You know what I'm saying? So I really hated that aspect of, of that level of respect and, and things based off of your rank. You know, so that kind of bothered me, but not too much. Because like I say, I, I really didn't have a lot of problems even being a low-ranking Marine up until mm -hmm. my corporal um, rank. So, yeah. And you had said, mentioned about you going to college. What was your major at that time? Well, I, I, I majored in general studies. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't have a, I, you know, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to go um, to school because I was doing so much other stuff. So I just really kind of just got my degree, general studies, and done the classes that I needed to do um, doing that. So, um, so now I was I had thought about going back and doing some more stuff, but it, 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 that time didn't pass. Now. <laughs> yeah, for me. Okay, so you had the dream, trying to make it definitely out there to Hollywood. Who actually had? inspired you like where did the inspiration come from you saying hey i'm gonna go ahead with this uh acting dream the rapping the singing like where where did that what did you were you in the choir you know as a child or where where'd that come from no well, i mean i've all i've always wanted to, to be a rapper ever since you know the run dmc days watching the TV, the movie breaking um still haven't seen that movie you still ain't seen breaking oh my god listen yeah. listen, listen if you were to listen all the ones who listen to my podcast he's so behind on movies tell it's ridiculous bro i yeah. am and there are some movies i just don't care for they're like what like we're taking your black card <laughs> yeah yeah so just watching a lot of movies um and tv shows and just i think just like most other kids we see uh people gravitate towards the person that's singing or rapping or whatever and we see all that energy and, and, and it feels nice to have that energy. So that makes us want to um, gravitate towards that energy. But, um, and so I've always performed. I was in a rap group when I was in high school. Uh, really? What was the group called? Go ahead, shout them out. S S U G, the Straight Up Gentleman. Straight Up Gentleman. Straight Up Gentleman. How are the members? How are the members uh, in the group? How are they doing it was, now? It was two of us. It was three of us. So, you know, it's two more. Um, and, and so we, we met up, we ironically ran into each other at a store one day, just all three of us winded up at the same store, ironically, which was so weird and, you know, kind of crazy, but, but yeah, so, the, you know, um, I, I don't think they doing music anymore and, you know, I don't do it as much. I did, I do have an album that I put out with, with those, you know, some of the books that I put out, but um, yeah. I haven't really been doing too much music now it didn't change so much but i've always you know wanted to be a rapper i always wanted to be an actor so i always put it out there every time i seen a father star i would pray on it every time i do a penny in a wishing well i would wish on it so that's something that i've always wanted to do would be that and then um i had a football coach named coach denny and he kind of put it over the top for me because he was a coach he was one of my favorite coach and you know he was an assistant coach but mm -hmm. one day we was coming back from pre-game meal and uh, right before one of the games and he looked at me he used to call me corny 
he said, my, my name, middle name is Cornelius, so he used to call me Corny. He said, hey, Corny, let me let me tell you, I want you to be something. I want you to make something out of your life. I don't care what it is. Make some out of your life. Be something. And he was dead serious, you know what I'm saying? And and, and that just made me not want to let him down. For some reason, that one conversation really stuck with me to go off and want to be something. And so from there, he kind of motivated me to kind of, you know, want to be something and go hard and do something like that. You know? And you know what? Um, we just got KG. He just popped in the building. KG, say what's up, Country Five? What's, what's going on, Country Five? How you got it, KG. You up in here with what's up, folks? Sorry for my lateness, man. Shoot, I took I had some technical difficulties with the computer. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what was going on with it. When the roach fell out, I got him out of the way, so it's all good. <laughs> all right, okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, KG. Hey, hey man. Keeping it one. You need to start getting your computers from the thrift store now. I told you that. Oh, um, yeah, They're the best way to shop. Uh, <laughs> so and, and you said uh with, with how's your coach doing now the one who really no, he passed away he passed away um oh. about four five years ago um uh, but um but just 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 um and, and but him and i we I, I i was i was invited to speak at my high school um years later and i invited him out and so him and i uh, was in the classroom and I and I explained to him what that conversation meant to me, you know, and me and him both got emotional about it. But that it stuck it stuck with me and it makes me want to, you know, even be more um visible in other kids' life because you just never know. You know, that one conversation carried me to where I'm at today. So you just never know if one conversation you may have with the youth you don't know how that might affect them, if that how that would stick to them. And, and I've I've spoken to people and said some things to people, and they came back to me and said, "Yo, country pride, you know what you said to me, um, you know, X amount of years stuck with me, and, and now I'm I'm this way because of that." So, you know, hey, uh, one conversation sometimes can be all it, it takes um, to reach somebody sure. and, and really have an effect on them. No, and that's true. Um, before we, you know, go to the next one, like I told you, I wanted the top five in the NFL. You got to give me a top five favorite rappers. It can include groups. Now, I need you to exclude yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big, Jay-Z, go. Eminem. Okay. T.I. Okay. Okay. And, and I'm speaking lyricist, dog. You know, I'm a lyricist. You know what I'm saying? I like people that yeah. I'm going to say that. About that lyric game, um, um, Drake got some lyrics, you know. I, you know, he more popish, and I know some people, you know, ain't really on him like that too much. But, but lyrically, Drake, Drake do have some lyrics, and um, I, I'll round it out with uh, maybe Andre three thousand. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I like you know the whole energy he had when he was coming up with Outkast and stuff. So. Who's who's yeah. the second person? Did you did you say Nas? I said, I said Lil Wayne, but I think Lil Wayne is the most lyrical person right now. I don't know what got into that boy, but man, who is lyricals, lyrics, and um, uh, and and metaphors? He he just he just way above the game, you know, for that. So yeah, so I, I like I like those rappers. Got you. Well, now let let me ask you this question. How uh, around what age were you got were you all when you first started the group and when did what made you guys how old were you when you disbanded so um kind of three part question how old were you when you guys first started how old were you uh, around the age that you had disbanded and then the last question is like what what happened for y'all to disband and you know oh well, well I I was I started rapping at nine before I even got into the group so when mm -hmm. I, I I moved and I moved to um, Clinton South Carolina. And that's when I formed the group with them, and I was in the ninth grade at that time. Um, mm -hmm. But then I moved back to Lawrence, and so I left Clinton. So it, that kind of like broke the group up, you know, because I was no longer in the, at that particular school uh, and around those guys anymore. So, you know, we weren't able to kind of get together and do as much as we used to at that time. 
So yeah, so that's what it was. Gotcha. It wasn't no craziness. We still we still cool to this day. So cool. Do you remember yeah. your first rap? If you do, come on, you got you gotta you hit a preset. Oh Lord, no. <laughs> Oh, you still I, got, I, you got you got your rap book. You still you got it somewhere in the house? No, no I, I mean, yeah, very, very, very. You know, what I'm saying, but it, you know, those are raps that I started doing maybe when I was in the military, um, you know, like that. Um, but yeah, I started off doing poetry, and then you know, oh, yes. that, so it's the rap. So you know, the poetry kind of taught me how to rhyme, and then I got into the music after that. Okay. All right. What's your favorite so, song that you made? Um, well, uh, well, actually, the, the recent, the the recent song off of uh, off of my recent album, I think is is my favorite. And it's called Elevated, and it's okay. really talk, yeah, it's called Elevated, and it's really talking about um, how I'm elevated, um, and I'm not manipulated like most of the public and the things oh, that yeah. I know and the things that I'm up on. Most people are not so. You know, I'm just really giving thanks to the to my um, journey and and how I've been able to grow and expand and um, see the manipulation and the overstanding manipulation and and, and, um, and not to be on the same level as as, as the average person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. That's real. Um, I want to go ahead and move on. You know, talking about uh, when it came with Hollywood, you know, making it there. Um, let us know what were some of the hardest parts about pursuing, you know, the careers into, you know, the rapping, acting, sing, you know, all that. Tell me the most, like, the hardest part about pursuing that career that most careers that many people may not realize or know. And you want to just go ahead and just let them know, warn them. This is what you're going to get into or this is what possibly may happen if you decide to... Go go this route and everything. Well, I mean, one of the challenges was I I, I was by myself. You know, I left South Carolina, no family, uh, and a lot of people that go to Hollywood come out there by themselves. So you have to kind of make friends and stuff, but it's kind of challenging as well because they out there for the same thing. And even though some people are there to help you, some people are not because they there for themselves. They there to help themselves. So. You know, you kind of got to navigate the waters of a competition as, and also needing people in a social construct as well. You know, we all want friends. We all want to uh, be cool with people, depend on people and, and, and help other people out. But at the same time, it's a competition. Um, also, with Hollywood, there's a lot of cliques. So you sometimes have to be in, in some of these cliques. Um, but you do you know need to put in the work and so that it it was challenging but it was no different than anything else and when i mean put in the work i mean actually going and taking classes learning the scripts learning how to act learning um different ways um to act method acting um commercial acting um so all of these things you want to you want to learn and you want to start working on And, and and even with the music uh networking um, getting out in front of the right people, making the right choices. Uh, I know I used to go to a lot of um, sitcom shows and that was live. And um, when you go to these shows, they have live audience. So I used to go and sit in this audience and they're always a warm up comedian in those audience that give people the chance to sing or rap or whatever. So I would go to some to a lot of these shows and I'd go up to the, to the DJ booth and I'll tell him, hey, man, here's my CD. The, the, the warm-up guy going to let me do a song. So when he let me do the song, play track two. Then I go down to the warm-up guy and say, hey, man, I want to perform. When you, when you you know, call me up, I said, the guy already got my stuff. He want to play it. So I oh, played so both I like how you did that. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, um, so when it was my time to rock, it was a show. And you know, I had my music and, and I had the, the, the audience there. So I was, I was able to... Uh, to, to gain notoriety around Hollywood as a rapper. And then, uh, of course, I started getting into the acting and started getting roles, and, and then it started to go from there. But going at both of them pretty hard was was what I was, you know, what I was doing. But it, it, it's, it, you got to be out there. You got to network. You know, you got to do all these things. And, and that's that's one level. 
And of course, you know, you have the other level of Hollywood where you get really in the game and you start doing major movies and TV shows and stuff like that. Then you get into the the stuff Cat Williams was talking about and the weird stuff in Hollywood. And, and uh, if you want to continue to be in good grace and doing some of those things, sometimes you have to do weird stuff. We're not saying everybody, but there are some truths to some of the things that we've been hearing lately uh, when it comes to Hollywood. So people that want to be a big, big, big star, you got to know sometimes what's the possibility that will come with that for you to continue to be in these big movies or TV shows and stuff like that. So, and you know, you ever, I'm sorry, go ahead, KG, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to ask the brother, have you ever gotten a script that you, that kind of intimidated you a little bit? Now, intimidating, what do you, what do you mean by that? Like intimidating? Did you think you could pull, it was you the right guy for the right job? Say that again, I'm sorry, KG. I'm sorry, man. Do you think that, you know, like you was the one that could play that role? Or you was like, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, no, no, no. I think, um, and, and when they say you get blackballed out of Hollywood, I think I, I kind of did. Uh, I can't say for sure 100%, but I was doing a lot of shows, a lot of movies and TV shows out there, man. And then I got this audition. And mm -hmm. it was an audition for me. And I play a lot of gangster roles, so. It was an audition where I was on the back of a bus pointing a gun at another gangster. He had a gun pointing at me. And so, you know, I'm like, okay, this this is what it is right here. This is what I do right here. So we're on the back of the bus. We lean legging each other. And then they say, all of a sudden, two men start kissing. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, what is that? Whoa, whoa. I ain't that good of an actor. You ain't, you ain't that good of an actor. <laughs> no, I, can't, I couldn't pull that off. No. He's fine. So I said, hey, you got it. No, you tell them I'm doing something else. I can't do that or whatever. And 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 basically that that's that was I felt like that's that was them trying me. That was the way for them to try me. If Country Five go for that, then we might can see what's up. Cause what they don't want to do is come on to somebody that ain't about that life and it can be a real problem. So let's let's mm -hmm. test a little bit with some of this other stuff. So when I got that script. And I had my agent, you know, tell him I wasn't able to do it. I I didn't work in Hollywood again for years. I, I so I left and came to Atlanta. You know, I think it's sick on how they like put a gate around people's success like that, man. But you know, well, yeah, man. but see, the thing is, you got people that's in control at the top and can make anybody a star. So mm -hmm. if I'm really, really that producer or that that dude that been producing a lot of shows and movies. And I can make KG, Pineapple, or Kendra a major star. That made me feel like I hold the cards. And I'm not mm -hmm. just going to give them away to anybody. So yeah. what can I get out of it? You know what I'm saying? If I could humiliate this person or have sex with this person or have something over this person. And everybody's loving that person. And I, I done just manipulated how that makes me feel. It made me feel like I'm a king king because you worshiping KG. But do you know what I made KG do? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So that 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 makes me feel like I'm even better, you know, mm -hmm. because of that. So so it's more the position uh, that these people have, and the fact they can make anybody a star. Now, if you really actually had to have talent, talent to do these things, and they need you because you're that talented, then it, it may not be as bad. But they can make pretty much anybody a star. Yeah, because I was wondering because I was put in a um, similar position. You know and stuff with a, a major record label you know mm -hmm. but and um i got out of there quick let's just say that yeah 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 mm -hmm. so it, it happened in the music business too um you know it that didn't happen to me in the music business but i i, I you know i had to buy out of that too and kind of go more of the independent route but you know i met with all the major players when it came to the music so it, it that wasn't um, I definitely could have been on the on the airways, just like your biggest star. But mm -hmm. I, I just didn't want to. Um, I just didn't want to put out a lot of negative content to my people. You know, I didn't want to. Exactly. You know, I rather I rather not do that. We have enough of that. I mean, that's real though. We have too much of that out here as it is. It's flooded with negative. Exactly. You know, right. stuff. I mean, whatever happened to the days of KRS One? You know, right. That part. You know. And, and yeah. I, I still wish Goody Bob and the entire Dungeon Pound, they're still going, but you know, yeah. they're not full right. steam like as they were, you know. Right, exactly. Yeah, and so I, I just refused to, to do that, you know, and 
um, you know, people don't realize that I I could have been an agent for them. And because for his rapping, man, I'm I, I, I'm a really good rapper. I, I really stick to the subject and can really, really bring home subjects. So if I really wanted to talk some gangster stuff and influence people to do some crazy stuff, I, I, I really could have did it very, very well. But I, I just I couldn't do it. I, I just couldn't do that to my people. Even if I, even if they don't know who I am, even if they realize that, you know, Country Fire, who I never heard of him, but if you would have, it would have been a problem. Kudos to you, my brother, for standing up against that system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, So I want to ask you this uh, question as well, going to the next one. Uh, We're talking about with acting, you know, and rapping and everything else like that. Did it ever affect your love life? At any point, you know, because I know, you know, you got the, the fans and the, the groupies and all that type of stuff. And people like thinking that they can handle it and they really can't. Um, no, um, it really didn't affect my love life. I've been I was kind of lucky. It seemed like everybody was just with, you know, whatever I was with, I was with. They was with, you know, I didn't have any any um body that was tripping on me for no reason at all you know i was kind of lucky you know so no i i didn't have any any issues that from that on that standpoint what about like a like a crazy fan moment what's the craziest fan moment that you recall um i had some girls uh have me to autograph their body you know with a, with a pen it's nothing oh, too yeah. crazy crazy but you know it's like yo you know, take this magic marker and sign your name on my body, you know. And so I, I done that, you know. Um, yeah, and, you know, people, you know, one girl came on the stage one time. They had to drag her off or whatever, but that, that was about it. But nothing too, too crazy. Like I say, I'm I'm not a major, major rap star because I'm more independent than somebody that, that's in the system. You see what I'm saying? With the system. But for, for what I did independently, I... I'm proud of it. I'll take it over me being manipulated by some major labels. So, you know what I always say? I always say that the independent folks are more important than what we see all the time on television because we get the real, you know, real. on the independent side. You know, we don't get no type of, you know, like clickbait, you know, like clickbait and stuff like that. Clickbait can be used for good, but, you know, we get the real with, with the independent yeah. folks and stuff. So do you go into... Uh, uh, I'm sure you know you're probably on Spotify and all that right there. I'm yeah. sure you're there. And stuff you ever think about just uh direct the consumer. You ever thought about that rap? The consumer? Direct to consumer. The, oh, well, that's 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 it's that's more of a thing now than it was back when we was out there where you had to go through these major labels and you know, of course the independent, we you know, we press up the CDs and did the gas stations and oh, shoot yeah. them out that way. So, you know, I've always been a direct to consumer type guy. And so now, you know, you can pretty much promote um, your stuff on Spotify and, and have people go right there and just download your music, you know, just from that. Yeah, the, re the, the reason why I said that, you know, because Spotify is getting a real bad rep right now, you know, and stuff about, you know, like stealing money from the artists, not really paying the artists like they should, you know. That's why I asked that question, you know. So, yeah, yeah. See, see I guess. Um, because it, it it went to places like Spotify where we can start making our own money, but I guess it seemed like every avenue that we we can benefit from started to get, you know, like I said, manipulated, taking money from some of the artists and stuff. So, uh, but that's one of the reasons why we need our own, our own, so that mm -hmm. it won't be any of that. We need our own Spotify and things like that. I know mm -hmm. JC had title, you know, I don't know if he still owns that. Or what not, no, I but, think he sold that off. Sold it, but see, things like that is what we need because we see at every turn we get manipulated or we get um, money taken from us. You know, the record labels took money from us, you know, and we the artists. Now we're able to put our own music out on Spotify. And like you say, excuse me, they're getting a bad rep now because they're they're stealing from us. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we well, got to be. They're yeah. also in a 360 deal as well. They doing the 360 deals now, you know, and that wasn't a thing back then. But they no, they, I'm talking about I'm talking about the entire company of Spotify. Yeah, oh, in a 360 deal, yes. Oh. So they got three major regulators that they got to report to, and they take 70 percent of their business, and they only have 15 percent to pay the artists 
and they only fl- functioning off of pennies, you know. So that's wow. that's why I was saying that right there. So Universal, yeah. Warner Brothers, and Sony uh, really is uh, above Spotify, and they control yeah. everything that Spotify does. Yeah. So I'm not surprised that they can do yeah. that right now. Nah, because it seems like any avenue we 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 get to pro- to um to prosper from our music is seen like they they want to have their hands in it, you know. Mm-hmm. They gotta have their hands in it some kind of way. And so until we really start to do our own and get our own and support our own, that's gonna continue to happen. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's right. Um, moving on with that. Thank you, KG, definitely for the historical facts, you know. No, I love right. I love talking to people that's you know, like that's independent and you know that's you know, like doing anything and you know them and stuff, you know. You, you know, I just love doing it. That's all. Of course, of course. Um, Country Fight, I want to ask you, because you have, you know, said that you've done everything you want to do by the age of 35, right? I listed some of your accomplishments. I feel like there are more. What else have you, were you able to do by the age of 35 that you achieved and everything? Uh, by the age of 35, I mean, I've done pretty much everything. So this is the book that I have wrote called My First 35. This is the first book I wrote. It's an autobiography. And- it, it, it was basically saying about all the things that I, I wanted to do when I was young. So that's basically what it was. Like I say, I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be a rapper. I wanted to, to go overseas. I wanted to perform overseas. I wanted to work overseas. Um, so a lot of those, just pretty much those things were the things that I wanted to do. And I was able to um, to accomplish that and make that happen. So. You know, though, you know, it wasn't too many other things that I wanted to do, you know, other than, you know, be uh, entertainer, you know, an influencer pretty much. And that's the reason why I wanted to be an actor or a rapper, because I felt like so much information was poured into me. And if I was a rapper or an actor, people would pay more attention um, to what I had to say. And it would make sense to, to, to um, be able to speak about the stuff that was poured into me. You see, so yeah, it, it wasn't too many other companies. Now, after 35, you know, I moved to Atlanta and I, I created my own acting industry for kids. You know, I did my own movie star experience. Nice, for nice. Yeah, and, and I gave the kids the opportunity to star in their own movie and uh, attend their own red carpet movie premiere. And, okay, and that meant a lot. Carpet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that meant a lot to me because it was, it was, it was giving, it made kids so confident made them smile and it gave them a platform that didn't exist you know and that was something that i had really created all all on my own and um and then i, I wrote those other two two other books I, I i know we said we'll get back we'll get into those in a little bit but you know that's it you know pretty much staying on point you know creating that atmosphere for the kids and um creating those books all right and talking let's speak on the books Go ahead, show them off. You got that? You got the. Yeah, the, I have them right here. So go ahead, show them. It took Talk me about like it. Seven years to write these books, but I have this book right here is is called The Art of Overstanding, mm-hmm. and then this book here is called Keys to the Soul. Now, okay. you read this book, and then um, it will segue into this book. So it's some reference keys in this book, and when when things get real deep, when they start to get deep in this this book then you come here to go deeper because okay. it, it's, it's some it's some deep deep stuff and i couldn't put them in both in, in one book because the, the reality is so bizarre the truth is really stranger than fiction and when you do all the research and the things that i've done you'll realize that it's some real crazy stuff out here that people if you're not in the know of it you will you'll think i'm crazy so that's why i wrote this first book so that you can know that the second book is possible it just showing you um different things and it's basically about overstanding overstanding life uh it's a conscious book it it really tells you um you know about politics about people uh religion uh the entertainment industry so i get into all those things and why things are the way they are why we live in the world that we live in why people uh in certain positions act the way they do you know and so once you can overstand these things <clears throat> then you you uh you don't allow it to bother you as much so mm-hmm. so that's why i did that and then 
you know, I started, you know, even more research, I realized that we not alone on this planet. We never have been. There's so many different entities that's on this planet, that's been running this planet uh, for years. Uh, so many different entities in other universes, other planets. It's just littered with life in other places. And they do a pretty good job in making us feel like we're the only thing going right now. We're the only living, intelligent creatures going. And, and kudos to them for, for keeping the world over people's eyes so that we can still be controlled and feel like we a bomb. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. We, we really see little small earthlings that don't have any comparison to some of these other aliens and entities mm -hmm. out here. Uh, and so that's what's in this book. You know, and like I said, it's very bizarre, but I went there. I kept it a hundred thousand. And anybody that wanna know the truth about this planet and beyond, uh, I I would suggest you, you know, get into those books, you know. I'm not trying to to tell the book, my brother, but do you mention anything about the Aminakians in there? Yes, sir. I'm an Anunnaki. All right. All right. I'm an Anunnaki, so I'm just waiting on them to show themselves now so we can get things going, you know what I'm saying? Because that's, yes, that's really what we're going to need in order to come back the position that we're in because we're really in an unfair battle because we we really up against some extraterrestrials. And unless we have our Anunnaki uh, ancestors to kind of fight some of those, we are at a disadvantage. You know? Yes, sir. But yeah, Anunnaki is definitely in this book right here. Okay, definitely gonna cop that. Look, I don't, I don't even know what an Anunnaki is. I can't. I listen. I, I'm not that woke. Apparently, I'm like, oh shoot, I got, I got some more research to do. Apparently, they G on it, you know. And I even talked yeah. about about that in my in, in my album too. I, I have an album I did with uh, uh with the books, and and I talk about the uh, Anunnaki on some of the songs. People didn't know what I was talking about in a rabbit mind when I said that. Uh, um, it was a rhyme I said, and I mentioned Aminaki, and so they held with politicians itching, glitching the system. They were like, what the hell is that? I'm like, if you don't know, you really need to get on into it. And by the way, while you're searching Aminaki, it's look at the Tartarians, why you had it. Right, right, that part. So, I mean, when, when I, and I wrote these books because I know I used to try to explain some of this stuff to people, and, and, and you can't do it in one conversation. You can't even mm -hmm. do it in five conversations because it's so much different um teaspoon yeah so many different moving pieces and it's so many and it's such a vast uh majority of information about extraterrestrials that's out there and how they control this planet and what they got on their own planet and stuff so i decided you know i'm gonna take these seven years and i'm just gonna write these books and i'm gonna put everything that i would want to say to someone or what i've learned and discovered over my years of studying i'm gonna just put it in these books and then that way i can just give it people and, and and that way they can get everything i actually thought that uh some of my ancestors were from the bureau and you know mm -hmm, i was yeah. wondering and i was wondering when they was going to come at it up a whole satellite up there to you know like monetize us you know so at least that's what i believe i don't know no, really yeah, Nibiru, yeah. Like yeah nibiru planet x and and, mm -hmm. and and it's and i think it's getting closer now and, and, I, and that's why you're seeing a lot of alien activity and and I, and and I think it's very very close to the returning because, um, from my understanding that the Earth goes around the Sun in a rotation, mm -hmm. but the Sun is also in a rotation, and as it goes, it, it's it's rotating in other planets and universes and solar system are also rotating, and then you have where Planet X will come somewhere close enough to to Planet Earth. And uh, and it does it like every thirty six thousand years or something to that nature, and yes, and, um, and that's when it's close enough for them to start to, you know, come over here and and start to do some things. But they they, I really hope they hurry up. I yeah, like, I know, right? I'm sorry, Kendra, for uh, derailing the that no, no, question no, here for a little bit. But I just love talking. I just all a group effort. Like I said, when I brought okay. you and Pineapple on, say, so, hey. Ask the brother anything that you want. This is an open, free forum conversation. Talk about it. He said, no holes barred. That, that's it. You know, so. Yeah, I just like to talk in the like minds about stuff like that right there, man, because, you know, that's why I was telling uh, the good sister Kendra earlier and stuff. Sometimes you got to put your mind in other places that's real, really real. 
this other stuff they put in our face is just to keep our minds off of what's really going on. Off of what this, is, exactly. this, this is the real what me and him are speaking about. Yeah, oh, of course, of course. Mm -hmm. And that's why KG and, and people like myself light up when 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 you when you talk to somebody that understands what you're talking about, because it's very rare. Um yes, sir. so many slept sleeping people and sheeple out here that you know when you do run across somebody that's woke enough to know some of these things, it's it's fascinating because it's just like talking about life again, but in a whole nother mm -hmm. way, you know. Uh and so it's so much information and so much stuff that you know that that people are not aware of so mm -hmm. yeah so yeah kudos to kg on that thank you sir you too as well mm -hmm. mr country five go ahead you got a tv series coming out some oh, new yeah. that you got you know? yeah 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 Let's so talk about so um like we was discussing earlier uh about the rapping and how rap you know, rap music is manipulated. You know, hip hop is 50 years old, but you know, I think ever since Fight the Power, you know, the, the, um, you know, a lot of the Jews and the Europeans, you know, really came in and hijacked the music. You know, and so even now, it's even worse because you hear a whole lot of the same. Every every song on the radio, urban radio, is about the same four or five certain subjects. You know, there's no creativity outside of that. There's no positivity outside of that and it's just it's uh it's so unbalanced with just negative content and what we have to understand is that um vibration and words mean something and it can and it can really really affect us and that's why you don't hear negative content uh on country stations or pop stations just our stations and you're and right. we, we we cater into that and we don't realize that um Rappers have been manipulated in ways to put out those type of songs. And then that, in return, helped uh, fill up the prison systems uh, and, and, up to, and, and help other industries by us doing negative stuff. And I think, like Ice Cube said once, uh, some of the people that own the record label also own private prison systems. And mm -hmm. so I decided that I wanted to do a TV series that kind of highlights that because sometimes we need to see it in order for us to change you know and it's okay to have some gangster music here and there but i just think when it's unbalanced and it's oversaturated then there's an agenda attached to it you see and so i wrote this tv series called the manipulated rapper and and uh it's 22 cool. episodes um one hour long and uh and it's really talking about uh, a rapper um that's being mentored by this guy that used to be a rapper and he teaches him how to rap in a more positive manner and then he started to influence other rappers and RB people to start rapping about more positive stuff and how that changed the trajectory of of us as black people just the music mm -hmm. alone um and at the same time uh he was promoting these books because i kind of wanted to tie the books into the series a little bit um so i can get more people interested in trying to get these books and read about what's going on in real life uh and so you really see who the controllers are when it comes to the to the music industry and controlling these these artists and um the controllers at the top of the level ain't even human you know uh and so that's something that people will discover once they start um getting into the series but uh of course i know it's going to be a little difficult to get studios and producers to try to produce a tv show like this because i'm exposing the hand that feeds me in, in in a way, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm I got you, bro. Really you exposing I got you. Industry. Yeah. So what I I'm doing right now is uh I'm I created a website and I'm going to just release the scripts so people can read the show. And I'm and then I, I'm still trying to get a shot. I'm still trying to get it um on a TV network or whatnot. But until then, my next step is to actually just release it. So May 3rd, I'll be releasing um, the Manipulated Rapper online. And so all you have to do is go online and register. And every Friday, you're going to receive the script. The script is um, one hour long, and it will come out every Friday. And then you can read it and give suggestions and things like that. So I'm going to do that and then try to build a buzz around <laughs> the Manipulated Rapper. And if I get a lot of subscribers, Hopefully that will help me go back to some of these studios and, 
Exactly. Not, not if, say when you get a lot yeah. of subscribers. Change, change, change it. Exactly. exactly. Change it. You're right, you're right, baby. So when I get a lot of subscribers, I can go back to the studios and say, hey, man, it's already popping. The information is already out. People done read this thing. We might as well go ahead and eat it. You know, oh, so yeah. let's do it like that. But um, but if can we subscribe to one more time? Huh? So where can we subscribe to that one more time? Yeah, so if you want to subscribe to um the Manipulated Rapper series, you can go to uh, themanipulatedrapper.com or you can text the word OVERSTAND to 545454. That's the word, just the regular word, OVERSTAND to 545454. And then you'll receive a link on your phone where you can go on to the website and then you can subscribe. All we need is your name and your email address, and then you'll you'll receive uh, the email um, before May third that you'll be able to uh, go online and actually you know have access to the script. Okay, y'all excuse me for a second. I left my phone in the other room. Y'all, y'all excuse me for one second. Are no, you all good? Go ahead, do your thing, KG. Do your thing. Okay. All right. Listen, we about listen. We're gonna blow you up now. I'm not playing no games. Let's go ahead. Get into this quick, fun, fast lightning round game. All right. So uh I let you know I sent you 10 questions. You got a chance to check five that you know you're gonna do, do your do do your due diligence on. I know you was gonna do all 10 do you do your due diligence, but I'm like, I feel like five, you're gonna knock it out the park, right? So right. number one, what's a good ass day to you? I think a good ass day to me is like I, 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 I've accomplished some things because every day I normally have like a list of things that I want to get accomplished. And sometimes I don't, but most of the times I do. So I think uh, if, if I accomplish the goals and the mission that I have set out that day, and then um, I think that's a good day. And especially if I'm around some of my friends and being able to hang out with some friends and fellowship, I think that's, that's a good ass day. Well, there it is. Okay. Uh, sec- second question I want to ask is, what's your favorite body part on a woman? Go ahead. I'm a butt man. So, yeah, I like the big butts. <laughs> Why that was he like, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got hey, I gotta concur with him on that one, yo. Yes, sir. I go crazy. Yo. I'm a now, now, I mean, is there, is there like okay, even if it's natural, right? Is it's too big. Where you like, all right, like that that's it's too much a little too much going on. Even if it's natural, right? Like uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm a guy who loves natural. I rather it's flat and natural rather than it's perfect and fake, if that makes any sense. But I do see some of them where that is a 200 pound ass on a 145 pound frame, and it just don't look right. No, nah, no, nah, I don't want that. No, nah, we, we, yeah, I'm with pineapple on that. Like, I know they're getting a lot of these um, BBLs or whatever they call them or whatever they when they putting asses on now but i'm just saying like you gotta look kind of decent <laughs> you know what i'm saying kind of right gotta be proportionate or something you know gotta be put together yeah you know because because they're not gonna wipe that big ass butt when they turn 80 ladies i want y'all know that okay it's it's, it's not gonna... <laughs> all right let's go to question three what's the worst or and or wildest date you've ever been on go <clears throat> i took a girl to a comedy show one time and then we on the way back you know she used to be homeless and, I didn't, and, and uh we got to talk about tyler perry about how tyler perry was homeless and um and i forgot what i said about tyler but for some reason that triggered that girl and she started screaming and cussing and tripping and you don't know what it's like to be homeless and I think you just mad because you were never homeless. I knew then she was crazy. Like, why would I be mad that I was never homeless? You know? I was like, why would you be mad yeah, that you were never homeless? That's actually, I'm pretty sure no homeless person really wants to be homeless. Yeah, that I had, yeah. She was a head case. She was a head case. Uh, and sometimes you just never know uh, people are head cases. And then, so I, you know, I kind of fired back at her, you know, let her know how crazy Rightfully I think. Rightfully so. 
and she um she couldn't take it to the point that she opened the door while we was on the freeway like she was about to jump out the car you know um i was like nah your ass really really crazy so when we <laughs> got off the freeway and got to the surface streets i i kicked her out the car like not kick her literally by like yo you, you got to go you know what I'm long as you weren't trying to do it on the freeway you put you <laughs> At least I ain't. Oh. I just can't just kill you. But you call your Uber though, because I'm out of here. So. Where, <laughs> where, was crazy. so wait, where did you? Uh, how'd you come across her? Was it? Well, it was, it was. It was actually. Uh, I had a. I had a room on Airbnb that I rented out. So one of the guys that was on Airbnb, it was his friend that came up from Florida, and he was like, "Hey, I got a homegirl that's coming up. She's gonna only be here for a few days." Can she stay in my room? I was like, yeah. So, but I, I talked to her. She seemed okay. I knew she seemed like she had a few little issues, but she seemed okay. But I was like, well, you're going to be leaving tomorrow or sometime soon. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to take you, you know, on a date. We're going to go and, and um, go out to the comedy theater and go laugh a little bit. I figured she needed that. But man, but you know, when people crazy, sometimes they they bout that life, they bout that drama. So it may not take a whole lot to trigger them to go off and be in their com- comfort zone of drama. And I'm j- I just I'm just not about that life. You know, I'm just not about all that drama. It ain't, it ain't, yeah, no, it's, yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> Look, I'm so glad. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you told your boy about it. Say, bro, you know, he's like, man, I didn't even know she was like that. Yeah, yeah, he, you knew yeah. she was like that. Yeah, you he knew she he, was like he, he knew she was crazy. You know what I'm saying? He knew she was crazy. So yeah, but uh yeah, that was that was that was wild. You know, and I and, and that was pretty much it because I ain't really had too many crazy dates, you know, like that. I ain't had anybody ever you know keep my car, flat my tire, and then like that. So, you know, I ain't really never had no issues like that. But she she was crazy. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's still my Number brother because it is very costly. Yeah. Yeah. It is very costly, and then, especially when you get, especially when you got candy paint. Man, I'm trying to tell you, you already know it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, yes, sir. Yeah. All right, fourth question: If you could live to be an age forever, what age would that be, and why? Uh, 25. Uh, and I think when you're a quarter, that's when you're supposed to be doing your prime stuff, everything that you want to make memories of everything that you really want to be good at uh is that's where it's at you know when you that age you know um still a lot to learn a lot to know because you're not as wise but physically and having that ambition and that drive 25 is where it's at you know at least it was for me and most people but if you ain't if you ain't getting it in at 25 you're gonna miss the boat because you don't get any uh, easier after that. Okay. Solid answer. All right. Last question. The fun, fast, lightning round game. What's the most amount of women that you've ever been with, been in a relationship with or and or dated at the same time? I probably man, say you five. trying to get, you trying to convict that man, man. Mm-hmm. I know you trying to do that. You <laughs> convicted. I said, okay. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, five. I, I say five. I think about five. You was in an actual relationship with, or just like you dated at the same? Oh, so did you? Have, did you not get caught, or or what happened? No, nah, no, nah, I I never been caught caught up. Um, except once, yo, I, I, once I only I got caught up once. That was it. Um, that was it. That was it. Only once in my life. But yeah, How, how'd you get? Okay, go ahead. Tell the story. I gotta know. How'd you get caught up? Yeah, because I need to be learning from this brother because I got caught. I was gonna say you better take notes, y'all. <laughs> take some notes. Nah, I, I I got I I got caught in the act in the car um by one of my other girls at my birthday party. But it was my birthday party, so I was wild. I was doing a, doing a lot, you know what I'm saying? And and, uh, and it was my homeboy's girlfriend. I mean not girlfriend, but it was his girl, but you know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and my my girl at the time, she 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 somehow came outside and, and saw it. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, so wait, so are you cool? You and your homeboy, y'all laughing off? We were good. We were good. We were good. We were good. Yeah, like like I said, that wasn't me and her first time. Um, when we were <laughs> my birthday, you know, what I'm saying so. Me and my boy, we 
back then we we was we was real players, you know what I'm saying? So we we didn't trip, you know, we you know, it wasn't our main girl or nothing like that, so it wasn't no problem, you see what I'm saying? So we all know main girls are off limits, but you know, oh, yeah. regular got you, regular bro. Girls. So let me, let me ask you, so five girlfriends at the same time, how what made you just end with that? Like what made you not want to well, I think you just outgrow certain relationships, certain things changes, you know, different things happen, you know. Uh, but I, I, I still don't have a girl that I ever dated that um, that I have a problem with, you know. Any girl that I've I've dated out of my life, I'm still cool with now. Like I can still talk to them on the phone or whatever. So it's not a girl out there right now saying hell with the country fire, that nigga ain't shit. You ain't nobody doing that. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I yeah. try to make, I try to make the, the connection bigger than the relationship. A lot of times, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. whether we together or not, we we still bigger than that as people. You know, to be able to understand how life is and how things change and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean we have to be enemies. You know, especially if we don't have a a reason to. You see, you know, I'm not. Calling you out your name, I ain't put my hands on you, I ain't do anything uh, to make you like resent me for the rest of your life. Well, I would definitely yeah. do it wrong with all these years because every time I try to put the put the uh, stamp before the relationship or whatnot, man, if that didn't backfire, man, because that's when you get those those crazy ones, man. That you know, like yeah. even if you do keep it real with them, even if you do try to, you know, like you know. You know, get away from not not in that sense, but you know, like just break off the relationship or whatnot. It always mm -hmm. become it became a um, stalkish situation. You know, wow. Yeah, I've been lucky in that aspect of it. Though I, I just it just the way that I kind of like rock with with the, with with the ladies that I'm with. That I, I just try to make just really make it bigger than sex too. Make our connection bigger than sex. That's so why I messed up it. Bigger than the relationship. <laughs> yeah. You know, so then when all that goes away. We still the nurtured our connection more than anything else. You know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. let me let me ask you this last question, then we can go ahead and end this interview. And I thank you for showing up, showing out, doing your thug thizzle. What about Valentine's Day with all these these five ladies? How, how did you how did you work around when it came to like was it was it expensive dating and and the the did you try to like like what what happened with that? No. Nah, um, I think I was, I was, I was, I went out on a date with two of them, and and the other three I was, you know, they, they I was busy, you know, I, I just couldn't, couldn't get to them, so you know, uh, so it was like that, and and, and um and and like I say, out of the five, everybody wasn't, I wasn't with everyone as strong, like you know, the, it might have been two that I rocked with stronger than I did the other three. And, you know, we might have a more of a casual relationship where we're not on dates all the time, but we'll link up. We'll link up, you know, once a week or so, and we do do our thing and go out. But it's not like we on the phone every day. I might do that with two of the girls, you see what I'm saying? And so yes. everybody wasn't on the same way me. So um, if I didn't call one of them or two of them for Valentine's Day, it really wasn't that big deal. Big of a deal because we we didn't have that type of relationship, you know. In in, in such such state, you they still were my girl, you know what I'm saying? But we weren't that intense with it. I want to switch yeah. gears right quick with uh, the manipulated rapper. Do you think you're going to get any pushback on that when trying to? Bring that into your fruition. I hope you don't, but I'm just asking. Do you feel? Oh, of like course, it? of course. A, a lot of pushback because what it is is like you you're, you're going to these. You're trying. You are exposing white folks for for manipulating us. I'm all about and that. You, and you showing the benefit of us going for all of this manipulated rap for us. You know the sexy reds and some of these people that that haven't even can't even really stay on beat. Some of these rappers. And then you got mm -hmm. people that haven't even been rapping. They ain't even been rapping six, seven months, and you all over because you did one song. So they know who to go get and, and, and edify them to a certain level, you see. Mm -hmm. And so it's still going on to this day. And they making money through the you know the prison systems and manipulating black folks and stuff like that. 
So I know if I come in and I'm exposing that and I'm trying to mm -hmm. stop that and I'm trying to wake up our people from being manipulated with just such so much negativity, of course I'm gonna get pushed back, you know, because mm -hmm. you're messing with people for money, you're messing with um their power and, and their egos as well to be able to manipulate us. So that's why I'm having issues right now trying to get it picked up from, from somebody to shoot it. And, and that's why I'm deciding to, for right now to release it as a script or so and let mm -hmm. people kind of read the script and then try to get, you know, the right people behind it where I can actually shoot the actual show. Mm -hmm. When do you think that, when do you think originality disappeared from everything? You, you, um, you you uh kind of got chopped up when you were saying it. So if you repeat, oh. I'm sorry, my brother. When do you think that originality disappeared? What year would you say that? I I I I was saying I think it, the late nineties. I think oh, early, okay, the late nineties. You know, um, that you know when you didn't have. Yeah, late 90s, early 2000s, you know, because you still had your different type of rappers that had their own different kind of persona, you know. Yeah. Um, but now you you can't even really tell the difference between two, the, the two. And I think when what really messed it up was when um, T-Pain brought back the Roger and Zap um, synthesizer, you know, auto-tunes. And so, so many people started going the auto tune route that you really yes, did. You really Wait, did. T Pain brought that back. Wait, hold on. So, Roger and Zap were the first ones to do that? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that. Wow. Oh, okay. yeah, I learned yeah. something new on my own podcast. Yeah. Oh. yeah. T Pain didn't start that auto tune. That was Roger and Zap. I thought, I thought he did. In a, in a way, I thought, you nah, know. Nah, I thought he did. Nah. I thought he did. Yeah. Nobody's been on that ever since Roger and Zap. So when T Pain came in with auto tune, I think that really messed the game up because so many people started auto tuning, and then you really couldn't tell the difference between any rapper because everything was so auto tuned up. You know what I'm saying? So you couldn't get that that vocal that that vibe or that 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 artist um, vocals and, and 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 the way they sound. You you didn't have that originality. So um i think kg that that was that was when it was really starting to be the nail in the coffin right there when that happened you know what i get that there and because even usher told t-pain himself that you know messed up the game yeah and t-pain said he went into a anxiety frenzy when that happened and stuff i'm sure the brother probably didn't mean to do it that he way didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't mean, he was just doing his thing and then they pick it back yeah. off of it. but then when the industry realize like hey we can make we can we can actually dumb this down even more by having everybody go through the through this and, and and we can make it even more cookie cutter and that makes it easier for us to just go out and get any other rapper to come out with no talent and we put them all behind auto tools and and, and then th there we go we got our next manipulated person you know yeah but they turn it into a whole era and and they just oh, yeah. they just clouded yeah. it up for real when do um so so I guess my next question would be, what you think is going to take to bring our people back to where we think we need to be? Where you think we need to be? I, I think we need to own our own satellites. We got the people that have the money now and stuff. We have to own our own satellites. We got to get our own radio stations. And then we have to start promoting ourselves to start backing our own music. We create the music, but we don't own the labels. We don't own the satellites. So that's why they can put out all this bullshit music and we go for it, you know. But if we started to own a lot of these labels um, and, and really start to talk in unison about the music and what it does to us and that the fact that we're not about to support a whole bunch of gangster rap, or a whole bunch of ratchet shit, you see what I'm saying? Maybe a little bit because, you know, you got people out there of all genres and you want to be able to cater to so many people but when you overrun it where you don't have any positive rap and you don't have anything with different subject matters outside of those four or five things that people rap about we have to come together and start boycotting that sort of stuff and we have to really do that and then i think once we start to say that's not cool anymore 
that I think that's when it's going to change. But but in order to do that, we got to have that power and we have to own our own satellites and we have to have our own radio frequency waves where we have our own radio stations, our own record labels. Um, mm-hmm. We have all the top talent. So they sh- we shouldn't be signing to Sony and all these other places that don't have black owned people in it because they manipulating us. They've been manipulating us for years. So until we're in the driver's seat, we still going to be subject to, to what they want us to what they want from our music. OK, so we got the books. We got the uh, the manipulator rapper coming. What's next for country? Pack? Uh, well, I, that's basically, you know, I got the album. The album comes goes with it. So people can order the album. I have 15 songs on the album and, and it basically is connected to these books. But um, but I made sure all 15 songs had nothing to do with the same subjects that you hear out in in, in out here um, today. You know, the, the braggadocious, the sex, you know, everything about sex, braggadocious, selling drugs and party. So most of the stuff that you hear these days is within those four or five different subject matters. Mm-hmm. So exactly. I wanted 15 songs that had nothing to do with that to show people that there are other things that we can rap about. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So, so that's that. That's it. But um, I just really want to get that show done and get these books because I think that's my whole mission. I think that's what I'm here for: okay. is to wake people up, let them know that we do have other entities out here on this planet. Uh, we do have Anunnakis. We do have the descendants of of, of of us here. We got reptilians that's been running this planet for years. Mm-hmm. So I. I wanted to be able to express that and get people to wake up on that. And I think that's why I'm an observer. So I'm basically mm-hmm. an observer and I observe for over 20 years and, and, and I'm just recording. So I'm just trying to find different avenues on how to report that. And so that's why the TV show is very important to me and the books are very important to me. But as of right now, and, and you know, I'm an actor, so I'm still acting, I'm still doing, you know, shows and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I'm still doing that, but um, I, I don't have anything outside of, of what I'm, I'm working on right now at the moment. Now, now I know when you're going to do your next movie. I know you're going to have your boy for a script, right? Okay, KG, there it is then. I ain't know you <laughs> act like that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Hey, well, it's yes, not a problem. Like I say, I'm, if I if I get this TV show out there, I'll definitely have some roles, you know what I'm saying? KG I'm does just, beats as well. He does okay. beats as well. Okay. Okay. Jack well. of all trades. And, and I actually write, write scripts too as well. Oh, so you write uh, scripts too. So KG all in there. So you 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 know you are you you are hell me and you the same. We we just, we pretty much the same. So we do it the same thing, man. So oh, yeah, man. you know, I just really wanted to be productive on, on everything, and, and I just want people to know before we do close it that it took me like seven years to write the book. Uh, about eight months to do the album and a year and a half to do uh, TV shows. So it took me over 10 years to kind of put all this stuff together. And if you uh, can respect anything, respect the fact that somebody dedicated a lot of time to this. And I had to sacrifice a lot of stuff, a lot of going out, a lot of partying, a lot of um, meeting people and doing things you want and dedicate and really sit down and, and, and hash out this information. Uh, and so if you can respect anything, just respect the dedication that it took oh, yeah. to put this stuff together. And one more time, man, I want you to get that. Uh, I want everybody to um, um, get that um, the manipulated rapper. So once again, man, what's that number, man, that we can uh, that we can yeah. all you know, text, that, man. text the word overstand, O-V-E-R-S-T-A-N-D. Text the word overstand to five, four, five, four, five, four. Or you can go to the manipulated rapper.com manipulated rapper.com uh and it's gonna pop up the website you hit the subscribe button right there and then you can um put your name and your um uh email address in there yeah that's it no nah, the manipulated rapper t-h-e the manipulated rapper.com and that's understand one word correct Overstand is one word, yes, sir. All right. And then you just type I that in. It in now. Yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, got it already. Oh, see, there it is. So, so, so that's that's what you do. Y'all do that, and, um, and then that way y'all can rock out with me and, and and be on this journey that I that I've been on, just to kind of let you know, just kind of in, inform people that 
the world is not what you think it is. It's way different than what you think it is, you know. That's what I'm trying to tell our good sister over here. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely different than what you think it is. It's, it's, uh, and like I said, they do a really good job at hiding a lot of that stuff from us and, and keeping us in a certain lane. But then when you really start to do your research, it, it's, it, the truth is, is stranger than fiction, you know. So, which is social media handle so we can so we can also keep on top of you and yeah, you know uh i'm i'm country fired webman on, on, on uh country fired cornelius webman on on facebook um if my my website you go to my website it has everything on there uh and that's that's www.countryfied.org and country fired is c-o-u-n-t-r-i-f-i-e-d dot org it has all the tv shows and movies i was in um, i have a documentary on there um the books if you want to order some of the books the books are on there so just go to uh countryfied.org and that will definitely um show you uh, pretty much everything about me you know on there and i got all the sure got all that <laughs> yeah yeah countryfied.org you 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 um you better pull me up and you'll see all the shows and, and stuff that I've been in and stuff like that. That's what up. Well, all right. Thank you so much, Country hey, Five, man. I appreciate, I appreciate you. you. Thank y'all. I appreciate that. Appreciate you, KG Pineapple. I, no I problem, man. No problem. The cast, man. It, it was definitely fun. I appreciate everybody that tuned in and um and was rocking with us tonight. I really thank y'all. Please just subscribe. Uh, I it mean the word to me, you know, to subscribe. At least subscribe, you know, and, and at least and, and come back and keep us updated, man, on every time. I definitely will. We'll I, I definitely we'll, will. we'll hit you back up in some months, man. Have you back okay. on. Okay, that would be awesome. I, I definitely appreciate that. We gotta get you but you get too big, you know. We don't want you to leave us, you know. We don't want you to get too big. <laughs> nah, we try man, to call I, him I, up. Nah, Next my, thing you know, he'll be like my head now, nah, my head done changed, man. I done did so many big things already, and I'm still the okay. same. So I ain't no stage too big for me where I'm gonna change, you know. I didn't I, I didn't get that. Yeah, you know, we go up go up to the show and be like, hey man, I know that brother in there, man. You don't know him, man. Get the hell out of here, man. Go ahead on somewhere. He come outside, he'll be like, I don't know you nigga. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we, I'm just I'm just messing with your brother, man. It's all love, brother. Yeah, it's all love, man. But I, I definitely thank y'all. I appreciate that. And um, I, I love. I look forward to um, the next time we get to do this. Most definitely. Well, this has been another uh, great episode of Kendra Crone Show. First interview uh, with the team. Like, this is my first time. Like, look, y'all y'all done broke the virginity. So this is great. First interview back. Uh, more to come. You know. Uh, shout out to Snoop Dogg. He tuned into the uh, live. He said that he, uh, he used to roll with you back in the day. Uh, Bishop Don Juan, you know, uh, Ben Stiller, yeah. you know, y'all say y'all hung out with you and Ben Stiller, right? Yeah, uh, we, just I didn't hung out with all the stars in LA, you know, said mm. Tom Cruise, everybody, like, real, for real. I, well, wait, I, real quick, real quick, who's the shortest uh entertainer that you came across where you were like, dang, man, you Tom, Tom, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, like, he was little, little, yeah, oh, yeah, we okay. and him talked at a party for a good little while, man, he's little. You can rest like, your you can rest your elbow on top of his yeah, head, right? Mr. 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 Mission Impossible is like little. <laughs> you know I told you them dudes be midgets in real life. Yeah, yeah, they sure. Oh, Cat oh, Williams, that my dude right there, but he he little. He little. Oh yeah, no, that's yeah, yeah. He's 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 mentioned that. He's, yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely little, yeah. Call him Papa mm-hmm. Smurf. I love it. All right, yeah. this has been a great episode of the Kendra Crow Show, <laughs> and we're out. All right, thank you guys. Oh, look, bro.